Advent week number four. Uh, and so today we are talking about love, talking about the love of specifically, obviously, Jesus Christ. And today I want to talk about uh, not just the love that was obviously shown to us when he died upon the cross, but the love that is shown to us every single day as he secures our relationship. So I don't know if you've uh, received, ever received in your life, like no one would do this anymore, uh, but a Dear John letter, right? I don't want you to raise your hands. Oh, no, no. But a Dear John letter, maybe today it would be a Dear John text, you know. Uh, but that Dear John letter would say something like, you know, uh, we've had a great couple years together, or whatever the case may be. Uh, I'll never forget our first date. Uh, but it's time for me to move on and go to greener pastures in my relationship. It's more of a breakup letter, right? Uh, so a breakup text would be, I'm out. That, that's what your text would read like. Uh, your, your Dear John letter would be a little longer, um, you know, kind of set up a little nicer that the breakup's about to happen. Or you may have been actually part of a breakup speech, right? Uh, maybe a show of hands. Has anybody ever, like, hey, uh, let's go out to dinner and a breakup speech happened? Anybody? Well, praise the Lord. Okay, okay. Uh, just a couple, just a couple. But that conversation may go, you know, uh, hey, uh, you know, you may have thought we're out here on a date, but no. Uh, I just need to let you know that uh, I've kind of fallen out of love, right? And uh, I just want you to know, here's a classic line. Uh, it's not you, it's me, of course. Uh, so, you know, no shade on you. It's not your fault at all. It's just all me, but it's time to move on in our relationship, right? And so the, the thing about it is those relationships, really about 95, this is just me thinking here, okay? Probably about 95% of our relationships are kind of like that, right? They, they are kind of, um, if you do the things I like, I'll continue to love you. If you don't do the things I like, I'm not going to continue to love you, right? And so we have that type of, you know, Dear John letter, uh, stashed away, written, you know, about 20 in a stack. You know, we have that text already written out, uh, the conversation already planned, because most people in our lives, uh, that's the extent of our relationship. That's like the depth of our relationship. You know, pr probably, obviously, save your family and a couple others. But everybody else, basically, we can fall in love with pretty quickly with every one else. So relationships are on thin ice. A lot of times we project that type of uh, style of relationship on our relationship with the Lord. And so if we're, if we're receiving, you know, Dear John letters and conversations where, hey, it, you know, it's not you, it's me, but this thing's over with, we may be thinking in our minds, well, wow, the Lord is absolutely holy. And so if anybody's going to write me a Dear John letter, or if anybody's going to send me a text or have a conversation with me, the Lord could legitimately have a conversation with me and say, hey, it's not you, or it's not me, it's you. The Lord could say to us all, hey, it's not me, it's you. You're the one who's not doing very well, right? You're the one who's not measuring up. You're the one who is not as holy as I am. You're the one that I'm going to say, ah, I'm going to cut this relationship off. And a lot of us live our lives and walk in that relationship with the Lord on that thin ice that we always feel like one misstep, one wrong thing, that surely if I do this again, that the ice is going to crack and we're going to fall through and the Lord will be done with us. And the Lord's love will absolutely diminish for us. And he'll just say, you know what, I'm just kind of done with you. Thanks so much for playing. But I want to let you know that you're not walking on thin ice in your relationship with the Lord. You're not walking on thin ice with your relationship with the Lord, but on solid ground. And I want you to understand this morning that one of the greatest Christmas gifts that the Lord has given you is not just salvation, but also security in your relationship with him. What a great gift. What a great gift that is. And so I, want, I need you to understand this morning and come to terms with and practically live your life like, because this is true, that God is not fickle in your relationship as people are fickle, as your high school girlfriend was fickle with you in your relationships, right? As your high school boyfriend, as maybe some marriages that you've had, as maybe some family members that you have, their relationship with you is very fickle, right? It all depends on what you do. 
very fickle. But I need you to understand that, that in your relationship with the Lord, God is not fickle. Right? And that your relationship with him is not fragile at all. That you are absolutely standing on solid ground. That you're secure in your relationship with God. That, that relationship is secure. And so Jude, I'm over now to Jude in my quiet times. I ran across this passage right here. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ. This is how Jude opens his book up. Who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ. Mercy and peace and love be yours in abundance. And so if we truly understand and, and come to terms with this, that our, that our salvation nor us continually being saved or God's love for us is not based on our performance and we just rest in the security of that relationship, we still begin to understand his mercy and his peace and his love in abundance. That we're not running short on those. So you should have no fear that God will fall out of love with you. You should have no fear that God will fall out of love with you. So 1 John 4.18 says, there is no fear in love. So when you understand that God, you love me, period, that's that. That you're not going to fall out of love with me based on the things that I do. Now, Lord, you may discipline me, and that's certainly on the table. That God disciplines those he loves, just like you do as a good parent, right? You discipline those that you love. And we understand that love, once again, going to be a clarifying point in this, in our modern day and time, that love does not mean acceptance. Those are not the same terms with the same meanings. So God's not saying that I will never discipline you. God's not saying that every, anything that you do because I love you, now I approve of everything that you do. That's not the case. But that I love you, and since I love you, there is no fear in love. You don't have to worry about God changing his mind about you and calling it quits on the relationship. But perfect love drives out fear. Drives out fear. God's perfect love towards you should drive out the fear that you may have in your hearts right now that, God, if I do that one more time, you're done with me. The perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears has not been made perfect in love. So I want us to go to a familiar passage. When you read it, you'll know it. Romans 8, 38 and 39. Romans 8, 38 and 39. Here's what it says. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Clarification right here, that this love that God has for you, that is secure, is predicated on the fact of this little phrase right here in green, in Christ Jesus our Lord. So today, if you are in Christ Jesus, meaning that you've placed your faith in Jesus Christ alone for salvation, then you are secure in that relationship, and you should be living in freedom, and security. Although, on the other hand, if you've never placed your faith in Jesus Christ, if you are not in Christ Jesus our Lord, then you have no security at all. In fact, I would be quite nervous. I would be a little skittish, right? Uh, I would be worried. You need to get things right and settle that today. But just to let you know that this promise, we can't be separated from God's love, is for those who are in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord. And so let's talk about a few things that could never separate you from God's love. Here are a few things that could never ever separate you or me from God's love. And Paul starts off with death. Death in Romans 8.38. The great unknown. The part of life that we have when life ends and we have no quite frankly limited knowledge of what goes on and therefore that makes many people nervous. And many people wonder, well, and see death as their greatest enemy and just kind of wonder, you know, in this death, 
that we will all experience unless the Lord comes first. But in that death, Lord, are you going to stop loving me even in death? Even in death, will you stop loving me, Lord? Well, we would say, no, obviously we're not. What about life? And life with all of its trials and troubles and tribulations, right, with all the headwinds and all the heartbreaks that life brings about, with all the times in life where we say, man, I wish that would have gone a different way. I wish I would have acted a different way in that particular situation. I wish that would not have happened. With all the dangers that life holds, that we understand right now that you've already lived through in your past and that are surely to come in the future, could life, anything in life, could that separate us from the love of God? Paul says absolutely not. So I need you to understand this morning that there is no power in your entire realm of your experience in death, the great unknown, in all of your life, in every circumstance or any situation you find your life in, in the past, in the present, or in the future, that none of that could ever separate you from the love of God. And so when death comes for you, and it's your time, when the Lord brings you home, like he did with our, your friend of mine, Michael, that there's no fear in that death, and, we're not, and mainly there's no fear in that death because we're not separated from God's love. That is what cancels out the fear, is the love and the security that God offers us. But there's no power in the realm of your entire experience, I believe is what Paul is getting down to right here, in death nor in life. It can pull you away from my love. And angels, the angels, although I believe this is a hypothetical, if a hypothetical, an angel are trying to pull you away because we know that the, the Lord's angels are ministering spirits to us. They would not pull us away. But just as Paul uses a hypothetical in Galatians when he says, if an angel were to come down to you and preach another gospel, that you should not believe that angel, right? So this is a hypothetical, but even if an angel of the Lord tried to separate you from God's love, that angel does not have the power nor the authority to do that. But what about the demons? The demons, well, they're actively trying to do that in every one of our lives. They are actively trying to make us believe that, once again, if you do that again, God's not going to love you anymore. Some demons are whispering in your ear right now that God's grace is about to run out with you. And when it does, you're no longer secure. And those demons are whispering in your other ear, some of us in the room and watching online, even talking to you about, why do you think God would even love you in the first place? No one else does. And why do you think you're so secure? The demons are whispering in your ear. Why do you think you're so secure in God's love? You're not secure in any other relationship. Why do you think your relationship with God is any different? They're just talking to you and talking to you and actively trying to pull you away and separate you from the love of God. The unfortunate thing about it is many of, them, many of us are, are buying into their lies because they are being sent out from the fury of their master, Satan, who's the father of lies. Lit by the fires of hell itself, coming straight to you, trying to get you to believe their lies and pull you away, or just try to make you believe and to live as if you could be separated from the love of God. So you will live an unconfident life. So you will always be looking over your shoulder. So you will always be wondering if you're measuring up in God's eyes. You'll always just be wondering and wondering and pleading with the Lord every single night, please, God, please don't send me to hell. Please, God, I hope I didn't mess up today. Please, God, I hope I didn't tick you off that bad today. Please, God, I hope your grace didn't run out on me today. Please, God, please, God, please, God. When God's saying, hey, your relationship with me, if it's based on the Lord Jesus Christ, your relationship with me is secure. Go on to other things, right? You have ministry to accomplish that you're not accomplishing because you're so up in your mind because you're listening to these demons about your relationship with me. I told you it's secure. You just don't believe me, God's saying. You're secure. 
Go on to deeper maturity. Go on to ministry. Go share the gospel with somebody. But get your mind off yourself because my relationship with you, God is saying, is secure. I mean, the point of the passage, the point of the passage is you're secure. In the way that Paul is speaking here under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he cannot communicate. This is exactly what he's trying to communicate. You'd have to be blind not to see it. But you know and I know, since we're engaged in spiritual warfare, there are active forces, the demons, are whispering those lies in your ear. I'm just saying to you today, don't believe it. It's not true. Your relationship is secure. I need you to understand that there is no power among spiritual agents, among all spiritual agents, the angels or the demons, or those above them, those who send out the demons and the angels. On any chain of command, in the spiritual realm, there's no agent that can separate you from God's love. Paul is saying here, how much more secure can you be? How much more can you be in that relationship? And then Paul goes on and he says, not the present, not anything in your life right now that you may be engaged in. And quite frankly, no one else in the room knows you're engaged in. You know, those things you try to hide. The present. But nothing in your present can separate you from the love of God and nothing in the future. Well, okay, so what if I do this? And what if I do this? And what if things break this way? And what if things break that way? And what if, and what if, and what if? In any scenario you want a what if in the future, Paul's saying to the Holy Spirit, listen, you are secure. You're secure in the present. You're secure in the future. And nothing in the present, nothing in the future is going to separate you from my love. So there's no power in the realm of time, in the past, present, or future, that's going to separate you from the love of God. That God will just say, you know what, I don't love you anymore. You're not worth it. And God says, I'm just cashing my chips on you. Thank you so much. That will never happen. And then he just says, any power at all. There is no power. If that's not explained enough for you, he gives his umbrella statement of there is not any power nor any power that can separate you from my love. So there is no power in the ranks, in the spiritual or the physical realms. In other words, not just the demons, but Satan himself. Or anyone in the ranks between the lowest demon and Satan himself. All up and down that line, in those ranks, there's no one in the spiritual realm. Or hypothetically on the other side. Or in the physical realms. I mean, here on planet Earth, in your life, in your day-to-day, -day, there are people in our lives, in your life, in my life, that would like nothing better to see us move away from the Lord, to doubt the Lord's love for us, to doubt the security that we have in his love and in our relationship. But any authority on Earth, any authority in the spiritual realm, none of them have the power nor authority nor the influence over God himself for God to say, you know what, I don't love my children anymore. Back to Jude, towards the end of Jude, at the closing of Jude, it says, to him who is able to keep you. So let me ask you a question, church. Who keeps you? Does your good behavior, behavior keep you saved? Are you sure about that? I like that. I like that. To him who is able to keep you from falling. So, so, so what you, who was that that said, Daryl, was that you, my brother? Say yes again if it was. No? Mark? Okay, Mark, let's have a conversation. It's just me and you, my friend. So make sure I have this right. So it's not as if you place your faith in Jesus Christ when you're 20 years old, and God says, okay, I'm going to forgive your sins 20 years old going backwards to when you were born. But then the rest of your life, from 20 to 83, we'll just see how this thing plays out. And if you perform well, then I'll, I'll let you into heaven. 
But if you don't perform well, then you're out of luck, and you go to hell, right? So, Mark, that's not right, correct? All right, Mark. We didn't even plan this stuff. It's you, Mark. I thought it was Mark Grove. Whoa, Joe, okay. So you start to see how secure our life. If it was true that you get saved in your 20s and God forgives you going backwards and that's it, you would have no security in your, in your relationship at all. Then it would become an absolute performance-based, I've got to be good today. I've got to perform. But if I don't, hmm. Or if I forget to ask God specifically for forgiveness of this one sin, as I run through my list of sins, and you committed 25 sins in a day, but you only asked forgiveness for 24, you're still on the hook. Right? But let's look at verse 24 of Jude again. To him he is able to keep you from falling, so he's the one who keeps you secure, and to present you before his glorious presence without fault. So now that you're in Jesus Christ, he presents you to God the Father without fault. Well, how long does that last? Well, throughout all eternity. That's one of the pillars we, reasons we believe in eternal security. Because Jesus Christ presents us to the Father without fault. Without fault. So to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. For the only God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and power and authority. Well, let's talk about that power and authority. Mark, how much power do you think, uh, just here we go again, Mark, uh, how much power and authority do you think Jesus Christ has? Are you sure about that, Mark? So, so you're saying to, and y'all just forgive us. So you're saying to me, Mark, that I don't have to worry about some other power that's stronger than Jesus coming up and, and prime me away. So you're saying, Mark, that, that nobody's going to walk up to, to God and say, you know what, you need to change your mind about Mark Wilczeki or Elliot Lindhaus because did you see this? Did you see when they did this? Ain't going to happen. Man, Mark, I'm glad you're here, right? So to him he was able to keep you from falling, to present you before his glorious presence without fault and great joy to the only God and Savior be glory. So that's why we're saying, Jesus Christ, all glory belongs to you. Because I'm surely not keeping myself saved, and you're surely not keeping yourself saved. You never saved yourself in the first place, nor keep yourself saved. So all glory belongs to you, and all majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord. Next Sunday morning on Christmas morning, thank you for the amen, Mark. And amen back to you, brother. Right? So Christmas morning, just to let you know, we're talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Before all ages, now and forevermore. So how long does this power and authority last? Before all ages, now and forevermore. H how secure can you be? This is as secure as it gets. And then Paul goes to height. What about the height? What about the highs in your life, right? And say, say you're up on the mountaintop. You're way up there on the mountaintop, and life is going great. And at that time, you may not even feel like you need the Lord in your life, right? I mean, you just got it going on. Lord, you can just stay, stay over there because I've got it going on. I don't really even need you right now. You're up on the mountaintops. Or even when you go down to the depths, and you just slide off this mountain right here and go all the way down to the depths, the deepest valley. That doesn't separate you from the love of God for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no power in the realm of space in the highest highs or the lowest lows that can separate you from the love of God. And then he says this, just in case you don't believe him, right? Just in case you're still wondering, just in case you're still doubts in the back of your mind, he's saying, or anything else in all of creation, anything else in all of creation, so anything else in all creation, I'm thinking this. Everything is created except God the Father. And his love for you is secure. By the way, he's the one who set up the salvation plan in the first place, right? 
He's the one who made this salvation by grace and not by works in the first place. Then you have Jesus Christ who's not created. He's the one who came and died for you on the cross. That God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Then you have the Holy Spirit that has been poured out into your life to show the love of the Father and to secure you in that relationship. So you have God who is not created, but everything else is created. The angels, the demons, the trees, the oceans, your boss, right? The, the one who keeps uh, asking you those questions about God that you just can't answer because you just don't know. The ones who's whispering in your ear saying, hey, you need to rethink all this Christianity stuff and this love of God stuff and this security stuff. He's just saying anything in all creation. In other words, you name it. I mean, just Paul's just challenging you to pick something. Just pick anything you want to pick. It would fall into that category of all creation. Just to reinforce the idea in our minds, because it's the truth that there is no power in the realm of all creation that could ever separate you from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ. So I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love. So how many are rooted and established in love this morning? Right? That if you believe and you are firmly in this relationship, and more importantly, God is firmly in this, in this relationship. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with the saints to grasp, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. That's why it's difficult to understand, uh, explain. So can we, can we explain this love fully? No, we can't. We don't really have that ability that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with the measure of all the fullness of God. I need you to understand this morning that it is the great Christmas gift. It goes right along with salvation. That Jesus Christ is enough to save you and Jesus Christ is enough to keep you safe. Firmly in that relationship. But I bet some of you are thinking this. Well, and I, I get all that. And I know that I would fall under the whole area of all creation. But some of you are still thinking in your, mouth, in your mind, but specifically me. Specifically me. You may be thinking some thought in your mind like, if God knew everything about me, if he knew every, I mean like everything about me, right? My thoughts, my actions, just different things that roll around in my mind, in my heart. I mean, if God knew everything about me, then certainly he wouldn't love me. Because everybody in my life who knows what's going on has always checked out on me when I have. And they find the truth out. You know? So man, if God knew everything about me, you know, I don't think that I don't think we'd be so secure anymore. But obviously, and very visibly, I need you to understand the fact that before Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, and while he was on the cross, he knew absolutely everything about you. He knew every thought that you would have. He knew every action that you would commit. He knew every dark secret you keep tucked up under the rug. He knows it all. He knows every inch of your mind when it's at its darkest. He knows every inch of your heart when it's at its darkest. He knows every thought that's ever rattled around your brain. He even knows his rebellion towards you, towards him, excuse me. But still in that moment, Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, showing you his love. Letting you know, I, I know it all. Like, you're not hiding anything from me, God's saying. You can't hide anything from him. You can't to everybody else. You can from your wife and your mom and your dad and your husband and all your church friends, but God's saying, 
I don't play that game. I know everything about you. But I still died for you anyway to prove my love for you. So rest in their relationship. Rest in their relationship. Continue to mature. Yeah, absolutely, in your Christian life. God's saying, continue to follow me obediently. And yet, I want to bring you back with some discipline. Sometimes that's necessary. Because I love you, don't think that everything that you do is just stamp of approval for me, God's saying. But there's just no way that if you're in Jesus Christ, God's going to say, this relationship is off. It's done. It's over. There's no way. Don't you care? Romans 5, 8, like we said before, you can read it for yourself. You can read it for yourself. Well, friends, I just want to invite you this way. If you've never experienced that love through Jesus Christ originally, right? Will you come place your faith in Jesus Christ alone today for salvation? And turn away from all these other others that may promise you love. Really, the love that you're looking for and you've been looking for your entire life is going to bring you that satisfaction. That you would turn away from all those others that are just promising you empty talk and go to the one who can actually deliver this to you. So you can quit this searching game that you've been on your entire life for the, for the real deal. You can, you can be a part of that, right? And then if you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to show that love to other people, right? And for you to be one who is a love agent going and showing love, especially to the people who don't deserve it, especially to the people in your life that would not expect you to walk up to them and say, hey, you what? You know what, brother? I, I love you. And they're thinking in their mind, I wonder why. Because we've had our odds, right? Maybe over Christmas this year, you need to, you know, show some love to some family members that you've been at odds with for a while. Like Christmas 78 is the last time you had a really nice Christmas with each other, Right? Every time to show some love in that way. And I want to encourage you in this way, as I do, to share the gospel. Maybe he's just a total stranger. That the love from the Lord would just permeate every conversation that you have, every action that you have, and that you be on the lookout for God opening doors for you to share the gospel. Let's pray that way. Lord, we want to pray for folks to come to you today. And experience your love firsthand. And not just read about it in the Bible, but to actually experience it for themselves. And Lord, for those of us who just are receivers of your love, and we're content with that right now. Just to be receivers. Lord, that we would be dispensers of your love as well. That we would mature to that point and become more complete in our relationship that we would show people love. And just like you, when you showed love to me, you showed, some, you showed a man love that did not deserve your love. And so the people in our families and in our friendship circles, we would just search those people out, people out that, quite frankly, don't deserve our love, that we've been at odds with. Let the love of Jesus Christ shine through this Christmas. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for the gift of security this Christmas. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me, please?